if you're a fan of the Sly Guy podcast and you want to, you just want to support the podcast more, you want to get more bang for your buck, you want some more bonus content, hey, we've got you covered. Head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy podcast where you can get yourself the bonus episode every week with a guest. Like we've done a couple of guest episodes on the regular podcast the last few weeks. People have enjoyed it. If you want to see more, get on the patreon.com. Some exciting guests coming up. We have the return of Psychic Glenn. We have Tim McGarry coming up. Uh, they've just recorded episodes recently with Kieran Bartlett, with Tom Smith, the entrepreneur. And um, we have Reese McClanagan over there, Danny Simpson. We have um, and at Kelly, there's loads, loads of guests over on Patreon.com. It's a back catalogue of guest episodes for you guys to enjoy. So go on over, subscribe to that. You get a bonus weekly extra Sly Guy podcast as well. You'll get the additional Dog Walks with Davey podcast and just other stuff as well. All for as little as £2 a month, so which means you're helping me, you're helping the podcast. And in turn, if, you, if this is what you enjoy, you're helping yourselves. So guys, get on over to Patreon and don't miss out. Guys, tickets for my show in the Ulster Hall, Bits and Pieces, are live now. You can get them through the Ulster Hall website or from Ticketmaster. And that's going to be taking place on Saturday, the 10th of September, 2022. Listen, the last show we did in in December was amazing. I am really looking forward to doing this show. And I would like to, see, to be honest, just, just being straight up, be truthful. I would just like it to sell out quickly so I don't have to continually, you know, go on and on and repeat myself. Because, hey. You guys get bored of it. I get bored of it. We're all friends here. Help yourselves by helping me to help you by just, yeah, buy tickets. Get sold out, yans. The podcast is going live on Friday the 24th of June 2022. We're returning to the Strand Arts Centre in East Belfast with some live stand-up, a live podcast, some fun, some frolics, some shenanigans. Hopefully you guys will bring me presents again. It's a bring your own event. So you bring your own booze. Get as pitched as you want. Come and see me, Kieran Bartlett, Mickey Bartlett, and there'll be another wee couple of surprises on as well. Someone doing some stand up, bits and bobs, fun time. Get the tickets now. They're all available via links on my social media. And if you just go below into the description of this video, bingo. There you go. Get it there. The Slag Eye Podcast is brought to you in association with Modest beer modest beer have been the sponsor of the podcast from day one they've been with us from the beginning they love me and i love them so it's, it's a mutual love the relationship we have with each other and listen they've got the works over at modest beer you know head over to their website to check them out www.modestbeer.co.uk to see what they're all about you know they've got pilsners they've got ipas they've got stouts they've got the works over there and if beer's not your thing and you just think hey i like high fashion as well They've got Modest Beer fashion over there too. They've got some merch. Go check that out at www.modestbeer.co.uk. Or if you're like, oh man, Dave, I can't be arsed opening my browser and all. Ah, it's too much hassle. I'm on Instagram here, just scratching my bones. Just go into the search bar and type in Modest Beer. Check them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at the handle at Modest Beer. Chin chin. (laughs) Enjoy the podcast. I'm the Slag Guy. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another episode of the Slag Guy podcast. Just off the bat, I want to say um, I've just realised I am wearing a black t-shirt, and I can see myself in the wee the wee monitor here. I've caught loads of dog hair on me. I look gross because I've got a dog. I mean, what? A, I was not. A, I didn't agree to that when we signed up to get a dog. I didn't want a dog at the start, and now my fashion is ruined by my dog my wife was like do you want to get a dog and i went well no because we've got a baby and babies are fucking mental and maybe you know we don't need another essential essential baby in the house another creature to look after whilst we already have one creature to look after a slightly older creature to look after but hey we got the dog i love the guy he's had his balls cut off rest in peace his balls and now i'm just covering his hair so it is what it is it's part of the problem of being a dog owner isn't it but you know what to any dog owners out there big shout out to your dogs nothing's better than a dog is it you know what we were speaking a few weeks ago when william was on the podcast about mental health um thanks to everybody just on that 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 reached out and said that they appreciated the episode you know that's what we're here for to be silly but also if there's something serious to talk about we'll talk about it too so appreciate everyone that that got something out of that but my point is if you are having some struggles with your mental health 
I would suggest getting a dog. There is nothing better than just going out and walking the dog when you're feeling shit. Now, people will probably go, Dave, is that a wise move? If you're really struggling, you go out for it. Yes. Clears the head, clears the mind. I'm not saying it's going to heal anything that's wrong, but definitely helps my bones having to take him out for a walk. I went to... Uh, down to the beach with him today. I'm nearly on 10,000 steps. Yes, and it's only the afternoon. And um, brought him down to the beach today. Let him loose. It was just nice, just looking at him, just going, there's a great guy. Just out running around the beach, having a good time, chasing sticks, you know, and dogs and pensioners. But, I mean, it's nice to look at. Yeah, yes, he knocked the pensioner over. Hey, that was her time. I mean, the fall, is her hip okay? That's not for me to say I'm not a doctor. Will she likely recover if she were to have to have hip surgery? Probably not her age, but hey, dog had a good time. Made me feel good that he had a good time, and all in all, it was just a nice time. So again, not the way we're going to start the podcast, end up talking about my dog. But point being is sometimes in life you make mistakes. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes you make errors. Sometimes your wife will be like, well, you should get a dog. And you go, fuck's sake, I don't want a dog. And then you get it, and you're like, love that bastard. So what I'm saying is everyone, if you're a responsible person, should get a dog. They're class. They're the best. And that's how I wanted to start the podcast this week. It's been the bank holiday weekend, which again, I don't know if any of you guys struggle with bank holidays the same as I do. Certainly since I've become um, self-employed, I don't see the benefit of a bank holiday. When I was working full time, I fucking loved bank holidays because it meant I got off work for a few days and especially love bank holidays that aren't regular bank holidays. Like bank holidays, they just decide to make bank holidays. Like, hey, fuck it, the Queen's. That, <laughs> call the Queen that bitch, hey? That bitch has been in power for 70 years. Let's have a bank holiday. Yes. That's one thing I, I think that, pe- that, that people should unite about here in this country. Not that I'm saying we should give a United Ireland or not. But I'm saying we should unite on the love of bank holidays because here we have problems. I mean, stunning to admit that, but we have problems here. And over the years, you know, people give off or like, fuck's sake, they have a bank holiday for the fucking 12th and all, fuck's sake, and a fucking bank holiday for St. Patrick's Day, fucking, was he a Protestant? Uh, it doesn't, hey, it's a bank holiday, you're off work, be happy. You know, that's what I think people should unite about. How enjoying bank holidays. That's fine. See if you're working, you get a day off work, great. See when you're self employed. I don't understand. My wife still works, she's a nurse of course, and um gets really frustrated at me because I get up. Some days I'll get up in the morning, now I'm self employed and be like, Right, I've I've work to do today. I need to get X, Y, and Z done, I need to fucking do admin, I need to chase stuff up, I need to book shows, I need to organise this, I need to check on this, do this, book this, write this, be there, organise this. And I, some days I'll get up in the morning. Some days, you know what, since I had Tom Smith in the podcast, I'm like, right, some days I'm going to start my day at 10 minutes. I'm, I'm going to start, when does the day start? 12 o'clock, I'm going to start my day at 11.09. I'm going to start a full 51 minutes early because that's how you get ahead of the game. I'm going to start my day before the day has even begun. And I go, get stuff done. I get a real head of steam. I'm like, I'm fucking, I'm going to get so much done today. And then she's like, why, why, what are you doing? And I'm sitting there two, seven, sending emails, waking the whole house up because I'm listening to fucking Ramstein while I'm typing up and fucking getting motivated to their music. And then she would be like, why are you emailing people? It's bank holiday. They'll not be working. And I go, oh yeah, shit. I forgot that I'm not a normal person anymore. I'm a, I'm a weird, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm my own boss. And it's a scary thing because I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to boil an egg. What do actually? I'm, I'm very, I mean, look at me. I'm an accomplished chef. You know what I mean? I know how to do things. But my point is, I like to get things done. I get myself motivated to do stuff. And on a bank holiday, nothing gets done. And then you panic. But why is he not replied to my email? It's because he's bank holiday. He's off. Go, Fuck. Fucking bank holiday. But this is the first bank holiday that I have really, like, as a, as a, as a full-time... Oh, sorry, this arm is doing my head in. Ugh. There you go. As a full time comedian, this is the first one that I went, you know what? People aren't going to reply to my emails on bank holidays. I'm a stupid bastard. So I'm going to just try to like enjoy it a bit. Try to, you know, remember that the bank holiday's happening and just do stuff for my kids. And guess what? It was it was a good time. You know, people um have been giving a bit of shit to the city of Bangor since it got its cityhood. Hey, Bangor the Sea Festival over this bank holiday, which means it was a festival by the sea, which, what a great time. 
you know, the pier in Bangor was just full of stalls. You know, all the same, all the same kind of stuff that you get anywhere of stalls. There was fishies, there were chippies, scampies, burgers, donuts, um, ice cream. You know, tacos, baked goods. And, you know, oddly, there was obviously, like, a, a paramilitary stall which had, like, loads of plastic toys that they're just, like, directly taken off, stolen off a ship, a ship container from China, just all these new toys. Be like, here, mate, do you like a wee fucking drone and all? Be like, ah, oh, three mini drones. How much that, mate? Two quid, fucking. And he knows balls that are attached to, like, kickmasters. They're just like a football, but it's attached to, like, a wee, a wee thing that, like nerds with their keys on and it's like they've got those and then they have you know as we frogs just fuck up against the wall and they stick that's what the paramilitary just stroked off the back of the ship container and they're selling that as well as, as gay, gear you know they're like do you want that wee fucking do you, mate do you want that wee fucking boomerang or do you want the fucking a key of coke I'd be like well I mean whatever you're selling man this is a festival it's a bank holiday let's let loose let's have a good time so it was a lot of fun a lot of things going on there was music and um, there was drink. I mean, that's all there ever is. See, when people say there's a festival, there'll be a fella singing, there'll be a beer tap, and there'll be fucking chips. That's all you need. That's all you need for a festival. Somebody singing, a few beers, chips. You've got a festival. Have a festival. You could even have, like, the fucking... You could... Ha- you, you Realistically, you could have the Lisburn Festival. I'd just be on Lisburn's High Street. It'd be shit like it's in Lisburn, but it would be on the High Street. Guy, guy singing a wee song. We newspaper full of chippies and Sam Miguel, Bob's your uncle, festival. But it seems to be loads of festivals kicking about this weekend. You had the Shore Fest, which um, I got confused with something that I was doing. I was doing a gig at the at the Lock Shore for the Jubilee, of course. You know, obviously, because I'm listening before people go, "Oh, you hum bastard!" Hey, cross community guy works work. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I was at Lockshore, but I thought I was doing Shorefest. But then I looked at Shorefest and I realised, oh, it's just a load of, like, trans DJs. So, like, am I going to be going up there talking about my how, how big a pain in the arse my kids are before, like, fucking Ben Nicky goes up and does whatever, just vibrates, because that's what he loves to do. He just turns up, <laughs> vibra- I'm old. He turns up his music to vibrates. Like, the only guy I know that vibrates is Petey Pablo. Yeah. Niche reference. But I thought I was doing shore fest, but I was just doing a, you know, it was literally people with deck chairs in a field in Lockshore, and I was told, like not long before it. By the way, this is a PG event, so don't be doing any of your bits. And I'm like, oh fuck's sake! So I can't go on and be like, well, you fucking pack of fucks. Um, I had to be PG, and I was, and it was fine. It was a nice time. Got home before eight o'clock. It was a good gig. You know, went down that festival. I see there's another festival, AVA, which I don't know what. It, it is it just look, AVA festival to me what I saw on social media was just it's like an influencers thing so like a lot of kids go there with like long earrings and weird sunglasses and like bum bags around like this is how society's feeling you know people do not wear bum bags around their bum anymore like around their waist they wear them around their whole body. Like, why are people so frail? Why are influencers so frail that they have to wear something that should go around their waist across here? You know? Bulk up, boys. Remember back in the day when boys used to be, like, like want to be buff back in the day? Nowadays, it's just guys that are really skinny wearing really short shorts and, like, fucking gym socks and then, like, walking around wearing, like, their grandas like tracksuit top and loads of jewellery like influencers nowadays have like that hair that's all like you know they either have mullets which are rare looking by the way mullets never look good in anyone you'll think you're cool now you look back in a few years and go oh no I look like a fucking no I look like Jimmy Savile kids are running around nowadays influencers are running around nowadays influenced by Jimmy Savile like the influencers have been influenced by the number one nonce you know what I mean I don't know whether that's you know something he would have wanted to happen, but that's the way influencers look. They're wearing these old tracksuits. They're fucking wearing granny jewellery, and they've got fucking hair like Jimmy Savile, and wearing the glasses and all like them. That's all you see. Influencers are dressing like many nonces. There you have it. If you're in a like, listen, you're running about being like, oh, I'm at this festival. Really? You're like a mini nonce. But people nowadays are like, oh, that's a good look. Like, I'm wondering, like, in the future, are, like, other nonces going to inspire fashion? Like, you're going to have guys kicking about with just 
unkempt hair and a wee grey moustache to be like Fritzled. Like that's my style. I'm Joseph Fritzel. With this style, you have Savile already. You know, guy, young men gonna be kicking about in suits and all, being like, I'm Prince Andrew. And this is Andrew Sheik, you know, another famous nonce. Speaking of fucking Prince Andrew, he's COVID. I mean, I would go as far as to say Prince Andrew having COVID is probably as true as me saying, hey, I'm left in stone. Prince Andrew just didn't want to be involved in Jubilee celebrations because he is an infamous nonce. You know what I mean? People will be like, oh, you can't say that about him. Kind of can, can, you know? Just kind of did. Uh, I don't think the Queen wanted to be mugged off on her big day by her pervy son. Just, you know, like you look, you saw some of the people that were on stage at that Jubilee party at the palace. Do you see that? It was like just the world's most expensive performance in front of Buckingham Palace when the whole the whole country are going to food banks. But hey, well, don't worry about that. It was prestigious. It was good fun. And to be fair, I watched every bit of it and I enjoyed some of it and didn't enjoy others. But there was a lot of kids involved there, like doing wee performance pieces, dressing up as like the fucking planets and all. And Prince Andrew was there. He'd be fucking loving that. Why? He'd be like a. He'd be like a builder in the nineties reading this on. Whoa, whoa, look at that wee fucking dirty bastard there. Whoa, you fucking half eats. Whoa, look at Jubblies. Whoa, Jubblies at the Jubilee. Whoa, Jubbly, Jubbly. You know, like couldn't have that. Be like, be bad for business. Instead, they just send out the less nancy royals. The more like like that was the vibe. They were like, listen, there was a party planner for the the party at the palace. Like, listen, the vibe we're going for. This year, it's more ponds, less nonce. Okay, cool. So we're gonna ha- still have ponds, but no nonce. Okay, good. So we're gonna have the poncy rich people there that speak like this. No fucking talk. Those guys there, no nonce. It's a nonce-free zone here. Party planner with the clipboard, being like, no nonces. I'm sorry, Andrew. Let me see. Your name is on the list, but beside it in green highlighter, it says nonce. So not you, and it's Andrew. Nance, um, Edward Ponce, okay, William Ponce, nice, Charles Ponce, oh my god, have you been a doctor about those hands? Anyone seen Prince Charles's hands? Wow, Prince Charles's hands look like a little, they look like uncooked cocktail sausages that have been, you know, they look like uncooked cocktail sausages that your mum have, have frozen and she's leaving them to defrost on a wee plate in the sun, but she's forgot about them and there's, they've been sitting in the sun, so they're still pink, but they've expanded and they're about to burst. Like, he looks like if you if you stuck a pin in Charles's hands, it would just burst blood everywhere. It'd be pretty gross. His hands do not look... They're not long. His fingers are short. They're stumpy. They look like little hooves. You know? Maybe people are like, oh, it's because he's in the Illuminati, man. Could be. I don't know any about that shit because it sounds made up to me. You know what I mean? But it's good to see the concert taking place. It was great to see Craig David. You know, good to see him back. Personal favourite of mine. Rod Stewart probably shouldn't have sang Sweet Caroline. Should have sang like Maggie May or something because he was shit at us. And should have stuck to his own songs. But it was it was fun to watch. My um my four-year-old woke up in the middle of it and came downstairs and was watching it. And it was kind of nice because you're like, this is quite a suppose an historic moment. We're watching something that will not happen again. Albeit it's maybe very gross, but it is what it is. And she was watching it and I was like, this is nice. She's awake. I'll let her watch a wee bit of this with me. Um, and then she just went booked everywhere because she's fully sick. So ruined the vibe a little bit, but you know it was a nice time. It was an interesting watch. I um I enjoyed it. You know, enjoyed the concert. I found it weird to see like all the royals like in their wee box. Like it was the closest thing I think I've seen to what it must have been like in like glad glad gladiat glad. Fuck me, I can't speak. It's supposed to say gladiatorial. But in glad- gladiator times, whenever they were fuck me, in gladiator in in gladi in gladiator times, when they were presiding over gladiatorial combat, that was easy for me to say. Jesus Christ! Like you're looking at them all up in the balcony, and they're like, they should have had that. They should have been able to be like Charles, because he's he's number one one royal now, isn't he? If Queen's not there. 
he'd just be able to with his wee chip a lot of fingers just going that would be much better wouldn't it because again if it was me I would definitely be dropping some some of those and some of the performances like I know I'm an old guy and I know I recognise people like Rod Stewart and Diana Ross and all you know Jonathan's wife and it was weird uh, to see people like there was a wee girl on this wee girl called Mimi and she was just singing a song about your house being on fire which I just found a weird vibe for like the being in front of the Queen's house now that would have been ultimate hustle from her if she had just set the Queen's house on fire whilst performing at the Queen's house I would have had a lot of respect for that but it was weird it was also weird whenever like Prince Charles just came down to start calling the Queen mummy with his wee fingers and all it was weird and Prince William come down and be like my grandfather loved to conserve the environment and then fucking Attenborough was fucking IMAXed onto the palace it was a bit weird do you know what I mean? And then the worst, Jesus, my, one of the, the number one guys of of like pomp, like pompous performance is, oh no, the Russians are coming here. Don't know if that's picking up his mic. Major, major plane noises. But they brought in, um, they, uh, they wheeled in Andy Bocelli, Andrea Bocelli to sing Ness and Dorma, which by the way, great, a great performance for many comes like that's the thing he's a blind guy so people just like bundle him in their car and be like where he'd be like where am i going today and they're like do you know the camp but where the fuck am i going today gordon and they're like you're going to fucking bucking and pass the dewey terminal it doesn't matter he could be in bucking and pass or he could be fucking around the welders same difference to you and they just fucking go in there and sing right so wheel him out and he fucking belts out Ness and Dorma and it's brilliant and there's fucking fireworks and all and he fucking hits the crescendo and it's like it's great like it looks like Pavarotti doing it there and he's fucking killing everyone's like oh what a fucking song and all oh fucking yes and you're like going fuck how's a performance then afterwards it's just like and here's Simon Le Bon the rest of the Duran Duran boys and you're like the fuck like that big fucking dramatic performance of Ness and Dorma and then you have a load of fellas in their 60s dressed like your man or mates at a hen do it's just it's like why did Duran Duran have haircuts like women you know all prancing around there with their handbags and all playing their, it's like hey guys dress like you would just dress normal don't get your hair stop going to get your hair cut by Stafford you know what I mean just have a normal 60 year old man haircut these dudes with like fucking cutting edge like women's haircuts it's like a we, they're, they're not cool anymore like you see when you're a rock star and you get this certain age it's okay to not be super rock star anymore like for example Alice Cooper big man loves golf you know he loves to just be an old guy I'm sure he would love to not dye his completely white hair pitch black and have to like shovel his bollocks into a pair of leather trousers and fucking hoist them up he's like hey just evolve man dress a wee bit more like an old like look at me i'm 35 and i feel in my heart like i'm 50. i'm scooting about in a pair of practical trainers so i can just nip around walk a dog i've got shorts on and just a simple black t-shirt i wear a gilet and a hat as well when i'm finished um baseball cap not like a fucking <laughs> not running around fan morrison fucking you're so dang you're so dangerous you know it's not my style and it is it's practical but you don't see me trying to dress fashionable like you know one of those those wee weird influencer guys like wearing fucking ski suits and you know those wee hats with the corks on them Australians have just stupid shit like that's how people dress nowadays they dress to be weird so people go oh man you look pretty cool you must have a good personality and then you chat to them you're like no your brain is devoid of any information you're a dunce you're a weird looking dunce. Hey, I'm dressed like Rolf Harris. Another nonce. He wouldn't be allowed on the list. I mean, nah. Rolf Harris is COVID too. Maybe that's going to be a new thing. If you have COVID, that's going to be it. It just means you're a nonce. So if anyone nowadays is like, oh, he's got COVID. You'd be like, oh. <laughs> Interesting. Just saying, think about it. Illuminati stuff there, isn't it? Whatever that shit is. But, um... Yeah, also, last thing about the Jubilee concert, the kids are pricks, and I love to see that, you know? I bet you whenever, like, 
there was one of them, I don't know what the name is. There's, is there Louis and George? I like the way George, the older one, was like, you could look at his face and he looked like Da from Give Him a Head Piece, going, fuck's sake. You know, every other minute you look at him, he's going, fuck's sake, fuck's sake. So this fucking shite, he's fucking here. Where's Mr. Tumble? This is bollocks. You know, he was not having a good time. And then the wee one, Kate was like, I, I don't lip read, but it looked like she just bent over and went, would you fuck up? Would you fuck up? And he batters her. Fuck, fuck you up, man. You fucking, you fucking posh toddy twat. You. He, was like, he was just battering her in the face. I was looking at being like, oh, the nannies are getting sacked here. These nannies are in bother. Kate's not going to be happy. It's going to be carnage. But it was a nice time. It was relaxing. And now people are sort of getting back to normal. And I'm feeling good. You know, there's lots of... lots of. It was a weird, like, on a, on a bank holiday aside perspective. Last week was a really weird week for me. Now, I know that the regular listeners will will know we talk about the ups and the downs and the struggles and the, 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 the wins of life. But this week was like... One of those ones that when I'm working, like when I, if I go back six, six months, this is this is six months that I've been self-employed now, right? And I have never had any kind of like um, goals. <laughs> you know, I have no aspirations at all in my life, but I've never had any like my my goal for so long was always to to become a self, just to be a comedian, a full-time comedian. That was always my kind of. Thing. you know it's always what I wanted to be and then I got to that it's like oh I'd like to do some of these other things things are you know but it was never like my number one goal was always just go full time and some of the stuff I did this week I was on set I was acting in a in, in a show that's going to be broadcast across the whole UK you know sitting there doing that on the Wednesday as you say I got my fucking cyber and shaved again fuck sake made me look like such a dick but I did that and then on Sunday night, I got the open for Kevin Hart. Isn't that mad? So if you flick back six months to me being in work, getting ready to leave, and they're like, oh, in six months you're going to open for Kevin Hart, I'd go on, in what world do you think that would happen, you fucking idiot? I'd be like, you need to go, you need to get COVID like Prince Andrew because you're an aunt. But it did. got the open for Kevin Hart, and it was mad. And it was weird because, like, it was a it was a slot that they were like listen you may you like you may need to just fill in here if an opportunity arises you mightn't get on but you know just like if he's arrived you may get on you may not so i was like okay i'm ready to go if you need me i'll be there if not whatever i'll get to watch kevin hart no problem so i was there and they're like yeah he's not here yet and the break's about to end would you be able to go on do 10 minutes and i was like sure so i got to go on did 10 minutes it was great you know really enjoyed this the set there was no pressure on the audience were up for it they were having a great time it was just really good fun you know what i mean really good fun and then i got the, as i came off stage kevin hart was going on and it was like one of those moments in life where like i got a little bit like not choked up but like a little bit like you know when you go oh, wow this is cool like this is a cool moment like the actual Kevin Hart's just going on after this muggins, you know. So made me think to myself, you know what? We'll maybe be all right. You know, maybe we'll maybe be okay because if I ever achieve anything more, or no matter what, that can't be taken away from me. So you know, one thing I'm always quite big on is like being able to tell my kids things, you know. So. Um, be able to tell my grandkids going forward oh I you know old, old grandpa opened for Kevin Hart one night and they'll be like you talk shit where's the photos and be like well we're not allowed to take any photos but it happened it did happen so yeah it was a lot of fun and it was just really cool so you know hopefully the opportunity will you know arise again for me to do that if it doesn't listen I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to do it it was really cool to do and yeah buzzing about that so yeah it's been a fun week and one of those weeks where in the bad weeks where you're like oh no why have I left why why did I why have I decided that it's a good idea to look after my two two gorgeous daughters my two the most beautiful little girls 
the sweetest little things in the whole world. Me, I'm trying to provide them by being funny. Like, what am I doing? And there's weeks that I'm like, oh no, why have I done this? And then there's other weeks like this, and I'm like, you know what? We'll be okay. And that's the weirdest thing about, I suppose, being being a comedian, I guess, is you try to fucking justify to yourself that, oh, you can do it. And yeah, you believe in yourself. But sometimes you forget that, you know, you, you, you deserve to be there. You know, you've put in the work, you do deserve it. And then sometimes you're like, you know, I get wild imposter syndrome. I'm like, why am I doing this? Do people even like me? You know, do people just hate me? Should I just pack it in? And then you have weeks like this. You're like, no, we're doing all right. We'll not say anyone loves me, but we're doing all right. You know, and then hopefully people will then come and see my show in the Ulster Hall in September. But you know what I mean? It's like sometimes, you know, you have to, you have to, as much as you, you, you worry about the, the, the tough times, I think a, a bit of you has to like appreciate the good ones when they're there because then they might happen again. Like I may never support a really big act like that again. I'll probably never support an act of that level again because he's like the fucking the top of the tree so you know it was class and it was chuffed you know really chuffed and just a real fun week and the bank holiday was just the finish I need now I didn't need didn't need my child boke all over me but hey one of those things isn't it so we are we are feeling good and listen if you do, let, let me know what was the fee- what's the feedback on the guest episodes a lot of people have been enjoying them being on board um, I'm probably going to going forward have like a few solo podcasts, a few guest episodes. Just keep you guessing, but there will be a guest episode every week. Um, pardon me over on. Pardon me again. I'm gonna be sick over on Patreon. Let me see. Somebody keeps trying to fucking hack my email for some reason, poor bastards. But yeah, I am. Um, I'll be mixing it up a little bit. So hopefully you guys. Um, enjoy it and if you just want to see more head over to Patreon again we're going to try to like we're going to try to work on that a bit more and try to get more things happening more guests on more variation we're just getting ahead of ourselves with guests now that'll give us a bit of time and to say us I'm not like being a pretentious guy me and Ben we work on that together so um, we'll try and get some more stuff over there so again thanks to everyone that is a patron numbers are, are great at the minute and hopefully you are enjoying what's going on and we'll get into your questions now and then I'm going to bounce because I have to go and collect my child from school uh, don't know why I went Welsh there big shout out to Wales on qualifying for the World Cup and dumping Ukraine out fucking sly like they g- cut the guys a break Wales like it's been 64 bloody years Ukraine are being fucking hammered here left right and centre and you bastards took one bit of joy out of their bloody week hope you feel Gareth Bale hope you're delighted you Tottenham bastard Patrick Quinn said how old is too old for clubbing I turned 40 this week well there you go answered your question's answered I mean I'll be moving back to Belfast from China after five long years I'm excited to get drunk and have a social life again but realising I will be double the age of most well I mean this is the problem you have Patrick is you don't want to be catching COVID if you know what I mean so you got to be careful as to what you do maybe is clubbing something you're into because if that's what you love who am I to tell you to not be yourself if you love clubbing if you love going out you love dancing you love getting into that whole vibe I mean why am I 70 if you love, man if you love feeling like if you love feeling the vibe you know go for it um, but you know I do think that it's the older you get you know if, if your brain works normally if you see young people you're like they're way too young for me for example when we did a gig in the limelight recently and had to walk from the stage to the like uh, dressing room area you had to go through like a club night and I was looking at them going you could all be in primary school with my kid you know what I mean it's like you all like no, I couldn't like I couldn't see any sideburns on any of the dudes and all the girls were just they looked like they were like little children so I mean if I was in a nightclub like that and I was looking around and be like oh no I'm far too old for this and then my first thought's going to be they're going to think I'm a nonce oh no so that would be weird I prefer personally the, the like pub scene I like going to a pub I think the older you get the more you like settle into pubs you go in you have, a, have like when you're young you get blitzed you go out party try to fucking hook up with people 
you know, party all night, dance, do whatever, you know, go to after parties, have a great time, get hammered, whatever. The older you get, you like to like go for a meal, have a few drinks, have a chat, you know. There's more of that kind of, I guess, engaging your, uh, I don't want to say engaging your brain a bit more, it's disrespectful, but you know what I mean, you like to just the chat of it. You're too tired, you basically can't stay up all night, you're busted. So, you know, I think clubbing, you on paper you can you're never too old to club but yeah people probably look at you if you're a bit older and be like oh no it's perverts in here he's in here you probably look at someone's too old and be like they are either an undercover police officer or they are going to drop things in people's drinks so i personally would not i don't think i would club again unless i'm on my holidays and i've got babysitter i mean my wife are like just trying to Trying to, trying to still be relevant and cool, which we're not. But I mean, I'm just happy sitting in having pints in, uh, in clubs. But if you take, well, you've been there five years, you know, if you, like, I, I'm mean, keen to know, like, the way you're, you're asking that question, Patrick, it sounds like you've not had any social life in China. Do you have friends out there? Like, do have you met people that you're like, that hang out with you, or are you just there by yourself? Because if you're there by yourself, during COVID for five years, man, that's not easy. And respect to you for that. And listen, welcome back to Belfast whenever you come. But also, China going through China was pretty cool. So I'd be keen. You know, maybe I'll get you as a guest one day. People would like to know because you were initially known as the Belfast guy in China on on Instagram, and your stories were pretty pretty interesting. You know, and and I'm sure there's some, maybe get you on as a guest, find out a little bit about China. Big shout out to my Chinese listeners because bizarrely I do get a few listeners a week. It could probably just be you, Patrick, and I've embarrassed myself. But then I'm a Chinese brethren out there. Respect. Naomi has said, what is your relationship or what are your thoughts? What is my relationship? I'm married. What are your thoughts on people who have romantic relationships with non-human objects? Hey, freaks. There you go. That's what my thoughts are. You sent me a story. Let's see. Before I open this, I'm going to say, I bet you the man, I mean, it's going to be a man. It's either an American man or a Chinese man, but I bet you it's a man who looks like a nerd. Let me see. The video is, lo- this page is loading. Oh, I thought it said Mr. Strange, which I was going to say, yeah, no. So there's a video playing here. My strange addiction. Man is in a sexual relationship with his car. A man has spoken about his unusual relationship as he's in a romantic partnership with his car, a 1998 Chevy Monte Carlo called Chase, and described to the world how the pair have sex. No, they don't, they don't have sex. You know, I'm afraid they, th- that's not what happens. A car doesn't have sex. A guy may put his dick into parts of a car. That's not having sex. Um, Nathaniel, I mean, call yourself Nathan. Nathaniel, yeah, it looks like a nerd. He looks, I'm um, oh wow, 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 wow. There are picture, pictures of this guy. The first picture is him, like, you know, there, there must have been a photo shoot here, right? So the first picture is him, like, dragging his hand across the car, like, stroking it, like, this is my car. The next photo is him underneath like <laughs> underneath the car in a way that looks like he's going Ugh! so there's a, there's there's some form of coming involved he's like oh you know when you, you like if you're like down below and you're making love right and the point comes where you're like about to bust yeah, and then you go from like lying down to, oh he's in that position like he is busting in this car He's just, I don't know what he's doing either. What I would love it to be would be if he was, it's not actually them busting in the car. He was riding the car and it just reversed over him. He did a full Brian Harvey on himself, but the exhaust chopped his walt off. Um, I hate, this is such a nerd way to describe something. We have our times where things get sexual. Um, What we do most often is I lean over the fender across the hood and do little things like press up against it and rub it like that. Oh, also, he, he's he's a gay guy too because he yeah he's the car is a guy so he's like, listen, I'm I'm gay with cars but not with humans so you know each their own. The last picture is him 
lick it. Like, are they snogging? Or he's like licking out the car? Licking out such a stinking term. Oh, he licked me out. No. Or rimming it. I don't know. Yeah, rimming it because cars have rims. There you go. Lick a wheels. Rim that. Give, you, give you a rim job, mate, and lick your wheels. Oh, no. But apparently, uh, one of the more bold positions is for me to be underneath him. He really likes that. No, he doesn't. He doesn't like it. The car doesn't have any feelings. It's an inanimate object. Nathaniel, you pervert. Do you know what I mean? You're not... You're a per like you're a f you're a, you should be there. You go see if someone is into this shit, arrest them and put them in jail because they'll be into other shit. You know the minute a hu there these are these fucking incel people. They're like nobody loves me, so I fuck a car. Yeah, and is anyone gonna love you when they're like, oh, who was your ex? Oh, my ex is Chase. Oh, what was Chase? For it does sound like a dog. Oh, Chase was my old car. You're like, all right, okay. Well, maybe I'll not. Go to sleep in your house because you'll skin me and wear me. Fucking freak. And yeah, he looks like a nerd. And here's the thing. I know we live in a time in 2022 where you can't say anything about anybody. You can't offend people. It hurts their feelings. This is the problem of the world. Bullying. <laughs> people have said no to it. Some people need to be... This, this fuck needs to be bullied. He's a guy and he go, you go, are you... Mate, are you fucking your car? And he'd be like, well, we're in a relationship. No, you're not in a relationship. You're a freak the fuck are you shagging your car for you fucking pervert you're mental like you're if stop and he'd be like well you don't understand yeah do you some brain works mental bastard anyway there's my reaction to that Naomi I think they're pervs I think they're fucking weird now McNally speaking of pervs has said you get that wallpaper sorted in your bedroom I accidentally uploaded a video to Instagram, right? I was having a bit of banter. I was clearing out my t-shirt drawers because I'm 14. And I was getting rid of some old t-shirts. I put one on. I ripped it like Hulk Hogan. I went on Instagram so I could put Hulk Hogan's music over the top of it. So I could save it to send it to some of my friends in group chat for banter. And I accidentally uploaded it. And, um... Oh, no. Shane Todd's FaceTime me here. Let me see what he wants to, to do. Hey, man, are you meaning to FaceTime me? Because I'm in the middle of doing my podcast here. Do, can I'll, you I'll can you can you do it live in the podcast? No. Um, I'll, I'll, I'd love to make something up and be like, "Oh, I was going to show you, you know, my balls and see if things you can get them reduced." Yeah. But I was actually showing you a corporate video to see if you thought it was funny. Right. Okay. Well, I'll I'll, I'll definitely have a look at that after. But what I was in the middle of the telling the story of was um, that I accidentally uploaded that video of me doing a Hulk Hogan thing on my Instagram, and I meant to do it to send it to you. And uh, yeah, I just think it's it's come across really weird. Yeah, and but you're telling. Here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. You prob you probably told the listeners you ripped your shirt and was showing your chest. But tell the real story. It was a pair of pants that you ripped open across the middle meant to send me. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I did that from behind afterwards, but I did send you that, and it was it was a good time. But no, some guy, right? I want to get your opinion on this guy. This guy Niall has asked a question again. I have I have really really expensive wallpaper in my bedroom, and uh, my, it was put Weird up. Flex. Eh, whatever. I was put up by my mother in law. And she didn't put it up properly, and a little corner just happened to fall down. And this guy now was like, "Your wallpaper's falling off in the corner," and I was like, "Okay." And that was more embarrassing than anything else. And he's now written, "Did you get that wallpaper sorted in your bedroom, mate?" So I'm yes, just basically. Why, why is your wallpaper not up, mate? Yeah. So mate, what? Why you, and also, why do you have wallpaper, mate? It's not 1994. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think uh, Pam was a great woman. I think she's been disrespected by Niall. Yeah. I think he was her letter of apology that he should write on a roll wallpaper. I just, I just want to say, but Niall, I've gone in to look at Niall's Niall's profile when he asked the question, and he has. He's cute. No, he has uh, the word Craig Avon in his bio. And also Everton, so he supports Everton. He's from Craig Avon, so I don't want to get too, like, be sly to him because I think he's enough struggle in his life. So I'll let oh, the God, fact. No, how do you know? How do you know that he? Uh, you haven't got that the wrong way around. How do you know he, he's not from Everton? He doesn't support Craig Avon. I mean, that, that that could be it. But either way, all I'm saying is, you know, he maybe needs he needs his support rather than slander, is what I'll say. So. Um, I just don't want to hurt him anymore but yes I have as soon as I finished that I put a fresh t-shirt on that wasn't ripped and I climbed up I licked the back of the wallpaper and I stuck it back on and we're okay now now right, yeah but I'll phone you in literally five minutes man literally absolutely gonna phone you back like lad in like 
five it's minutes. Gonna it's going to be lit, right? Speak to you in a minute. Bye. Bye. Yeah, what? There you go. An impromptu guest on the podcast. But yeah, fuck you, Nile, and thank you for making me fix my wardrobe. Dempster says, Well, Davy, have you ever written your mantra since speaking to Tom? Um, Tom Smith, he's talking about the, the entrepreneur who's a guest on my podcast. Um, you know what? I'm just grateful every day. I'm grateful for the week I've had and, you know, winners win. That's all we need to say on that front. Winners win and this week I've won. Maybe this next week I'll, I'll eat shit, but hey, this week I feel like I have won. And the last question for this week is from Phil. Would you say there's any particular show that convinced you that writing for TV was what you wanted to do? And can you share some more details about how a project like William of Orange Dale gets picked up? Did Channel 4 come to you and say, write something for us? Um, It's weird. I think I, spoke, I actually spoke about this when I did the podcast with Tim McGarry, which will be out maybe this week or next on Patreon. But I've always liked seeing stuff I've written being performed, whether that's you know, on stage or, um, you know, whatever, a video. I always like to see the stuff I've written be performed rather than being in stuff. So I've always liked that and I always liked the idea of writing for TV or other other things. And, um, you know, I just, that's just something I enjoy doing. I like to, I like, I like to just make people laugh, really. There you go. So not so good. I mean, I like to see people laugh. I like to make people have a good time. But no, I just like to do whatever you know that, that's fun. You know, I I mean, whenever I, I I left my job, I was like, what the what what is it you want to do? You know, I like stand up and I like writing. I just like making funny things, whether that be what. So if I can find a medium for that, it's great. And just writing happens to be something I really enjoy doing. Um, can I share more details about how a project like William of Orange Steel picked up? Well, we did the blap, which Channel 4 of seven blaps, and they make shorts for all of them, really, this whole, the whole seven. And then they kind of just pick whatever ones they want, if any, or several, and they make them. So we're kind of just in a waiting game now. I don't think there's actually a commissioner in place at Channel 4 at the minute, so if they wait until they get get put into the post and then if they enjoy it or the you know they want to make it they'll ask us to do a series or do a one-off pilot i'm not sure exactly and yeah hopefully it'll get picked up with any luck you know but the response to it's been like genuinely unbelievable like i hope they would do well and it has exceeded kind of the expectations that i had for it and in terms of numbers, you know, we actually have more views now on our our blap than all of the other blaps combined. So hopefully that'll count for something. And the feedback's been brilliant. And let's hope Channel 4 want to see more because I certainly want to make more. I feel there's way more we can way more scenarios and circumstances and tales we can tell from this world. And I hope that it gets to get made. So I mean, you know hopefully channel 4 say make us more we'll just have to see we'll cross our bridge when we get to it but yeah thank you to everybody who's watched and commented um, positively it's much appreciated and guys listen that's the end of the podcast I think I've spoken enough I need to go and see what this weird project Shane's been working on is and give him some feedback and then I need to just go and fucking collect my children from my babysitter so guys listen thanks again um, you know if you haven't again already check out the, the Patreon yourself to the Ulster Hall it's going to be it'll be my best show by a country mile I'm telling you if you enjoyed the last one get this one it's going to be well worth it and yeah just keep keep on hustling guys you know winners win take it easy I'm the slack guy